Hey everyone, welcome back to The Sugar Geek Show. I'm Liz Merrick. Today we are making the most popular recipe on the blog and that is vanilla cake. I know, I know, you think vanilla cake is boring, but this cake is so moist, so tender, and absolutely delicious. So say goodbye to your boring vanilla cake. I already have all of my ingredients pre-measured into bowls. This is an important step, especially when you're trying a new recipe. It helps you to just remember all of the ingredients. Everything's at room temperature. And by room temperature, I mean just like a little bit warm. So the butter has been softened in the microwave until you can impress your finger into it and leave an indentation, but it's not like melting all over the plate. Eggs I place into a bowl of warm water for about five minutes to bring them to room temperature. Milk I microwave for about 30 to 40 seconds to get that warm enough. So the idea is all of our ingredients are the same temperature so that when we mix them, they create a delicious emulsion. If you don't bring your ingredients to room temperature, they can separate, curdle, your cake falls, we cry, it's not a good thing. I've also preheated my oven to 335 degrees Fahrenheit and prepared three six inch by two inch cake pans with cake goop, AKA homemade pan release, AKA the best thing ever. <laughs> We're baking these cakes at a slightly lower temperature than you typically would. Normally you do 350 degrees, but when you do a lower temperature, your cakes tend to not rise as much and you have a tighter, more velvety crumb. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is combine our liquid ingredients together. I'm going to take some of my milk and then to that, I'm going to add my vegetable oil. And then to your leftover milk, we're gonna add the eggs and the vanilla and then just give that a quick little whisk to break up the eggs. I'm using liquid vanilla. It's a very high quality vanilla, but you could also use a whole vanilla bean if you wanna get really fancy. Just remember the higher quality of ingredients that you're using in a vanilla cake, the better it's going to taste. So we're going to start off by adding our flour into the bowl of your stand mixer, then your sugar, baking powder. I know it seems like a lot of baking powder, but trust me, baking soda, and salt. And then we're going to attach our paddle. Give it a little stir just to make sure everything's combined. And then we're gonna start adding our butter in small chunks. If you add in big chunks, you're gonna get a flour bath. <laughs> so go slow. And what we wanna do is just coat the flour in the butter. So what this butter is doing is it's actually coating the flour and stopping gluten from forming. Gluten is the stretchy stuff inside flour that makes things like bread chewy, crackers crunchy. You know, it's, it's really great in some things, but for something like cake, we want it to be as tender as possible. So the butter is actually gonna stop the gluten from developing and create a really tender melt in your mouth texture. We're letting our mixture combine until the flour and butter resembles coarse sand. So now comes the part that freaks everybody out. <laughs> We're going to add in our milk and oil mixture all at once and mix this for two full minutes. The reason we're doing this is to develop a light and airy texture for our cake create as much structure as possible since we've already taken down all that gluten. We need to use air to kind of bring it back as much as possible. And a lot of people ask me, can they replace cake flour with AP flour and that cornstarch alternative? And some recipes that works just fine, but because we're mixing for two full minutes, you cannot do that with this recipe. You'll end up with a really gluey and like chewy type of cake, not good. The reason for this is because cake flour is actually made from a different part of the wheat berry than AP flour. Cake flour is made from the center of the wheat and it actually contains less gluten and has a very soft texture when it is turned into flour. AP flour contains the center and part of the outside, which is where all of that stretchy gluten is. So now I'm gonna start adding in the rest of our liquids. I'm gonna add them in thirds. After the second addition of liquids, go ahead and stop and give your bowl a scrape. So at this point, your batter should look homogenized, not broken, very smooth, 
And if you have done that, then congratulations, you just made a vanilla cake from scratch. If your batter looks separated and broken, then that could mean that some of your ingredients were perhaps too cold. And if you bake it up, then your cake could fall. You could have a little gummy unbaked layer at the bottom and just have an overall kind of bad texture. All right, so now we're going to divide our batter into three pans or two eight inch pans, that's totally fine. About three quarters of the way full. And then we're gonna bake these in the oven at 335 degrees for about 25, 30 minutes until the center is set and a toothpick comes out clean. If your cakes are not done after 30 minutes, you can go ahead and bake them for three minute increments until they are done. Okay, so while our cakes are baking, we can go ahead and make our buttercream. This is called my easy buttercream and it is extremely easy to make. So this recipe is actually like a mock Swiss meringue buttercream, which is a buttercream that you make by heating up egg whites sugar, whipping it to a meringue, and then whipping in your butter. But this is a nice shortcut because it uses pasteurized egg whites. Pasteurized egg whites just mean that they've already been heat treated, much like you would heat treat milk to make it safe to drink. They do the same thing to egg whites and it makes it super easy. We're using powdered sugar so that it dissolves and makes a nice smooth mixture before we start whipping in our butter. Whip your egg whites and powdered sugar for about five minutes on high. And now we're gonna add our butter chunks in in small increments while it's mixing. Your buttercream might start to look kind of curdled. That's totally normal, just keep going. <laughs> okay, so once your buttercream is light and fluffy, it is ready to add the vanilla and the salt. And you might notice, even though it's light and fluffy and creamy, it has a very slight yellow tint. That's totally normal. That's from the butter. So what we're gonna do is add in one drop of purple food coloring, and that is going to counteract the yellow in the buttercream. Science! And then, if you are super extra like I am, you will switch to the paddle attachment and let it mix for about 15 minutes on low to just remove all those bubbles. All right, so our cakes have been chilled. I'm gonna go ahead and just trim off the brown edges before we start stacking. Okay, so I, I'm gonna place my cake onto my cake board or you can do your cake plate, cake stand, whatever you feel comfortable with. Layer up a nice, healthy layer of your easy buttercream. So this buttercream recipe makes a ton of buttercream. You'll definitely have leftovers if you're just making a little six inch cake. Um, the reason I use this much buttercream in one recipe is so that it fills the bowl almost all the way to the top and you can make it nice and smooth. But you can freeze leftover buttercream. We're just gonna put a thin layer of buttercream around here. This is called the crumb coat and it just seals in all of the crumbs. These cakes are chilled, so they're a little bit firmer and easier to handle, but when you eat the cake, you definitely wanna eat it at room temperature. Okay, now we're gonna put our final coat of buttercream on here. Nice thick layer, start on the top. And we're just gonna do a, a rustic layer. It's all about the deliciousness of the cake. We're not worrying about making it perfect. I'm gonna use a bench scraper. Uh, you can get these at the dollar store, honestly. It doesn't have to be expensive. It's just kind of nice to help smooth out the edge of the cake. Helps me kind of see where I need to add more buttercream. And I'm just gonna put a little swirl design in the center. I'm going to do the same thing on that side. Just with my little small spatula. Okay, our vanilla cake is complete. Wasn't that easy? Now you know everything about how to make the best vanilla cake with the most amazing vanilla frosting. You're done, you don't need any other recipes. <laughs> Hopefully you've enjoyed this recipe and tutorial. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. New videos every Tuesday. I'm Liz Merrick, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.